When I started my stationery business, one of the first products that I really wanted to make was a big teacher planner. A lot of you guys have been asking me to show you how I made this planner, so now I'm going to show you guys the complete process I went through to create this planner, from planning and designing to printing and binding. I decided to design my teacher planner specifically for South African teachers because I knew a lot of teachers here personally that I could ask about what they would want in their ideal planner. The only reason why I didn't make a more generalized teacher planner is because I don't know what teachers from other countries would want included in their planners. But I would like to design one in the future that teachers all over the world can use. So, if you're a teacher, feel free to let me know in the comments what you would want in your ideal planner. Once I did my research and planned out everything that I want to include in the planner, it was time to start with the design. I like to start with the cover design whenever I design a planner. It really inspires me and gives me direction for what the inside of the book should look like. I use Canva to design my planners. For my teacher planner, I created three different design styles to fit different types of personalities. It's important to be careful of having too many options for people to choose from. Three options might even be too many. The less decisions a customer has to make, the better. After I designed the different cover options, I start with the inside of the books. I included the following in my teacher planner. Along with designing the content of the planner, I also add decorations here and there that pull the design from the cover throughout the planner. So when designing my covers on Canva, I always look for matching graphics and elements that I can use throughout my planner. Lastly, I also designed the end pages. So with designing a big planner like this, the project file starts getting really big, to a point where Canva might struggle to load the designs. So I create my designs in signatures. When a book is hardbound, it includes multiple signatures which are sewn together to create the text block. When a design is complete, I download it as PDF print. The next step in this process is printing. The printer I use is the Canon PIXMA TS9540 or TS9521C. This printer is also known as the Canon Craft Printer. It can print A3 size paper, which is necessary for creating A4 hardbound books. I print each signature in booklet format on 90 GSM A3 short grain paper. I print the end pages on 160 GSM A3 paper, also short grain. The grain direction of the paper plays an important role in the lay flat properties of the book. For the cover, I used to print on 170 GSM semi gloss coated paper and pasted it onto the book board with PVA glue. But recently, I started using sticker paper for the covers. It costs a bit more, but it saves me a lot of time and frustration. In this video, you will still see me using the glue method, which brings me to the final part of the process, binding the planner. But before I continue, I wanted to take a moment to talk about a brand that recently reached out to me. Maybe some of you have heard of them before. They're called Kiddle, and it's basically a design tool similar to Canva. You can generate images and graphics using their AI design tools and create designs using their illustrations, text fonts, photos, etc. You can also create mock-ups for your products or designs. Personally, I think their best feature is the text editing. You can manipulate and warp the text exactly how you want it, 
and you can add all kinds of cool effects. So if you guys want to check them out, you can click the link in the description of this video. They have a free version as well as paid versions. Okay, let's get back to the video. Once everything is printed, I fold the signatures using a bone folder. Next, I use an owl, I think that's how you pronounce it, to punch holes through the signatures for where they will be sewn together. I use a punch guide that I made to help me know where to punch the holes. After all the holes are punched, I sew the signatures together using wax linen thread and an upholstery needle. Next, I place the text block neatly into my book press with two boards on each side to protect it. And I glue the spine of the book with PVA glue. After the first coat has dried, I add a second coat. After the glue has dried, I take the book out of the book press and use my awl and a utility knife to separate the boards from the text block. They get glued together when I glue the spine. Next, I add the end pages. First, I fold them in half and then I put a thin strip of PVA glue onto the folded edge to paste onto the text block. After the end pages are glued on, a thin piece of fabric is glued onto the spine. While that dries, I move on to making the book cover. I put a thin layer of PVA glue on the book board that I already cut to size and carefully place it on the back of the printed cover page. Then I flip it over and smooth it out using my bone folder. Getting this step right takes a lot of practice and it's so easy to make a mistake which is why I recently switched to using sticker paper. After the cover is pasted on I cut off some of the edges and cut the corners. Then I glue the edges onto the book board using my bone folder to flatten it out. While the covers dry, I cut the corners of the text block fabric and put a second coat of glue on the spine. Then I paste on the bookmark ribbon and the bookends that I previously made. While that dries, I create the spine of the book using book cloth that I made myself. I glue the spine board piece onto the fabric with PVA glue and then cut, fold over and glue the top and bottom edges of the fabric. After that's dry, it's time to glue the cover boards to the spine piece. First, I work out where exactly the covers will be glued onto the spine piece by fitting it onto the text block and making light pencil marks. Then I add a good amount of glue onto the spine piece and press the cover boards on top. I flip the cover over and smooth down the spine piece. Then I also paste another piece of 170 GSM coated paper over the spine on the inside of the cover to strengthen it further. Sometimes I also use sticker paper for this step. Once the cover is dry, it's finally time to adhere the text block to the cover. First I glue down the thin material onto the text block, then I put a layer of glue onto the whole end page and carefully paste it into the cover. I do the same for the other side of the text block.
And that is the whole process of how I created my first ever teacher planner. I'm planning on making a course in the future about creating planners and stationery to sell. It's still only a thought and I want to find out if there is a demand for that or not. So if that's something you might be interested in, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. If you're still here, comment the word lemon so that I know who those of you are who watched the whole video. I also really want to thank you guys for all the support you've been giving me in the comment section of my previous video. Your comments absolutely make my day and I really appreciate you guys subscribing and following my journey as a small business owner. I really hope this video was insightful and that it will maybe inspire some of you to make your own planner. Remember to check out Kiddle if you're interested and then hopefully I will see you again in the next video. Bye!